All right, insiders, we are back with another exciting edition of Newsflash, YouTube's informal way of letting you know what all of the teams in YouTube are doing to make this the best video platform out there for you. So let's talk about last week's video and any feedback that I got from that. There was one main piece of feedback, which was echo. Now I'm a little bit restricted with where I can film, uh, where I live. So it's a relatively large room. So if you have any tips for how I can minimize that echo uh, in a large space, do let me know as ever we read all of the comments. All right, let's get into it. Now, previously, Rachel had given you a little bit of insight into how we're dealing with loyalty. If you missed it, there will be a link in the description below and you can watch back. TLDR, what we're looking at is experimenting with new and returning viewers and that metric within YouTube analytics. Now we want to get into this experiment in a little bit more detail, so let's get into it. So what this small experiment is, is exposing a small percentage of creators to two new metrics within YouTube analytics. What are they, I hear you ask? Well, the first is new viewers, and the second is returning viewers. Now let's get into how we define each of those. Firstly, for new viewers, these are people who have not visited your channel before and watched your content. Simple enough, right? Wrong, there's always small print. A new viewer may be somebody who's watched from a private browser or deleted their watch history or a viewer who just hasn't watched your channel in over a year. Those may be counted as new viewers, so it's important that you keep that in mind. The reason why it's important to keep in mind is because of the fact that we hope this helps creators to better inform their content strategy over the coming months. Now, returning viewers is exactly what it says. So that's somebody who has watched your channel before. There's no small print there. If you're in this experiment, Rachel has some guidance she wanted me to pass on to you. And it's around the graphs that you're gonna see in YouTube Analytics. If the top line of that graph is returning viewers, that's great. It is a good indication that your content is resonating with your audience. However, if your top line within that graph is new users or new viewers, that is gonna indicate that people are coming to your channel, which is great but the content isn't resonating enough to bring them back. So some tips and advice there to get those viewers to come back to the channel is experiment with a consistent series that's updated every couple of days or every week, focus on a topic and make it a recurring topic, or simply have a consistent and recurring host. Try those things out. Now, if that top line is returning viewers and you're not getting that many new viewers, that's an indication that you need to really spice things up. And by that, I mean, take a step back and think, if I were a viewer interested in the general topic of X, Y, and Z, what would I really need to see on this channel to draw me in and to take a chance on a new creator and their content and really have an enjoyable experience? So for example, um, a creator who uploads a title and a video along the lines of, I bought a new home, probably isn't gonna resonate with new viewers who don't know you yet. However, if it's more general, like here's my guide to home improvements, that's something that's accessible to almost everyone. So really take that step back and try and look at your channel fresh and we hope this guidance helps. Next up, we have an update about an experiment we're running with regards to reminders and comments. To help encourage more respectful interactions on YouTube, we're testing out a reminder that pops up before you post a potentially offensive comment. That will allow you to take a moment to pause and reflect on what you're about to post or to re-edit it before you actually post it. Important to note that even if your post doesn't trigger that reminder, it can still be taken down if it's found to be in violation of community guidelines. Only those in the randomly selected experiment will see this reminder and will continue to adjust if and when and how it's shown depending on the experiment results. Next up, we have a reminder rather than an update. 
and this is around creators' ability to block ads from appearing on their channel. Now, this is specific to a couple of categories, and what we're talking about here is ads that creators simply don't want to appear on their channel rather than blocking all ads on their channel. So how you can achieve this is by going into your AdSense account rather than in Studio, and you'll see a tab called Blocking Controls. Now, within that tab, you'll have the option to block URLs, sensitive categories, or general categories. And when it comes to the URL, what you're gonna wanna do is use the top level URL, the top level domain. And what this will do is block those subdomains from serving ads against your content. So for example, www.connorschannel.com Inputting that as a URL you want to block ads from is going to block everything from connorschannel.com slash about us um, slash sell product X, Y, and Z, etc, etc. Now, it's important to note that if you do this, you may see that dip in revenue because, of course, you're blocking some ads from serving against your content. Now, if you want to learn more about this, there's going to be a link in that description below. Um, so let us know if you have any questions. Next up, we have a short update about a really exciting new card that you're going to see in Studio Dashboard. And what this is called is the published video card. It's going to show you your last four published videos, as well as shortcut links to comments, to analytics, as well as to youtube.com. Next up, we have some really exciting news about the App Store and its launch in several new countries. And what this means for YouTube is the YouTube app will be available localized in several different countries. And I'm going to read them out because I can't remember all of them. They are Bosnia, Herzegovina, Georgia, Iraq, Libya, Montenegro, Morocco, and Serbia. So previously users could access YouTube by using another region in the App Store, but that's no longer necessary and that's a commitment to us going global and trying to provide you, the creator community, with access to all of these audiences in a way that's streamlined and more comfortable for them. Now, we got some great feedback last week and a lot of it around the difference between shorts and stories. So I just wanna take a moment to clarify. So let's talk about shorts, first of all. What the creation tools are gonna to do is produce individual 15 second video snapshots. That said, any videos that are up to 60 seconds in duration are going to be eligible for the shelf. Those shorts are going to appear on your channel like any other video, and that means that they're going to be available in the videos tab on your channel and within any portion of your channel homepage that you dedicate to a certain content category. Clear? We hope so. Now, let's talk about stories. They are lightweight short form vertical videos or images. They are available for seven days as a slideshow of multiple shorts or images. And they are available to subscribers via the subscription feed and to all viewers via the homepage and watch page. We'll be posting more information about shorts and maybe even doing a little demo um, to make sure that we, or rather I, know exactly what I'm talking about. So keep on giving us this feedback. It's all being passed on to the product teams. We really appreciate you taking the time to provide it to us. Last week, we asked for a piece of trivia. And the question was, YouTube is available in a multitude of languages, but how many languages is YouTube navigatable through? The answer is 76, and the winner is Halberry. So congratulations, Halberry. Some great content there. Thanks so much for engaging. Now, I'm gonna propose something wild, and that is that we pause the trivia question for one week. And that is because of the fact that, to be honest, I need your help. We have 353,000 subscribers, and we value each one of them, and we want some more. And the reason why we wanna grow this channel is because for a platform that is as big as YouTube, it can often be difficult to communicate with an audience of 
2 billion users um, and hundreds of thousands of creators. We found this channel is a really great way not only of getting the word out in a human way, which is always good, but also hearing your feedback. I can't tell you the amount of meetings that I've sat through where somebody has said, well, actually, we heard from Creator Insider comments that X, Y, and Z could be doing an awful lot better by creators. This product needs to be finessed in some way or an improvement needs to be made. And as well as that, we've heard an awful lot of feedback about something that you really like. And this brings me to what's going to replace the trivia question for the next week. I'm going to set ourselves the target of growing this channel by 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I want you to join me on that journey. And the question this week is, what can we do with this channel to ensure that it grows by 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year? We're going to pick the top three ideas from the comments below and we're going to implement them. So next week I'll be calling out the top three ideas as well as the people who propose them. So those three people will be next week's winners. So um, thanks so much for watching this week. We'll be back next week as ever. And from shorts to the comments and the reminder to everything else that I've talked about, make sure you tell us what you think in the comments below. We read through every single one of them. We summarize them for each team that has given us an update to give to you. And um, so always, always worthwhile to tell us exactly what you're thinking. Thanks so much. Ciao for now.